Hey guys, welcome to Wonders of Magic. We are here today at the Warner Brothers Studio for the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. Now this is one of my favorite tours here in Hollywood and they've added a few new things. There's some new updates and we're gonna go see what those are. I can't wait to see all the new updates that they added. Yeah. This is also my favorite tour. It's my second time doing this tour. I fell in love with it the first time I did this, so yes. I'm excited. And it's been a little while since we've been here, so they've added a few new things. We're gonna go check it out and see what's new. Let's go ahead and get started. Come with us on Finding the Wonders of Magic. All right, so after walking through security, we're greeted with this new Barbie display. Check this out guys. This is actually the car used in the movie. How cool is that? This is so cool. I'm in Barbie land heaven right now. Check that out guys. <laughs> this is the actual car. It's like the plastic car. It wasn't a real Corvette. Taking a closer look at the gauges, you can see they're actually not real. They're actually decals, which is kind of cool. And then taking a look at the luggage in the back. This looks like the one used in the film. There's some stickers there. They also have the outfits as well. Take a look. This one's Barbie's outfit. They have Ken back there or the different versions of Ken. Different versions of Ken. They even have Alan too, which is really neat. That is so cool. And then they have the disco outfit. Oh, the disco outfits, that's right. In the beginning scene. If you guys haven't seen the movie, definitely check it out. This is the backdrop. They got like the lamppost. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more. Uh, but let's go take a look at the outfits. So here we have the Allen outfit, which is pretty neat. If you'll notice, all these outfits are based off the original doll. So this is actually a exact replica or like a full-size replica of Allen's actual outfit that he was as a doll, which I didn't know that until the end credits. So. Yeah, that's really cool. And they also have Weird Barbie. Weird Barbie. <laughs> Yeah, this is a really cool character in the movie. You can see this is her outfit that she was wearing. And then they also have the outfits that they're coming in through when they come through Venice Beach. First beach scene. Yeah, their first beach Real scene. Real beach scene. Yeah, when they make it through the real world, this is what they're wearing. And yeah, these are the actual screen used ones in the film. Here's a look at Barbie's beach outfit along with both cans. It's amazing to see all the costumes that they used inside that film. The props, you got the full car. That's the best part. That's the best part. That is so good. Imagine if you could sit in there and get photos. I mean, From such a classic. Seat. It's like a jumbo size Barbie Corvette because they had the little ones, you know, when you were a little girl. I'm take my picture right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so over here, they even got some Barbie merch. They got tons of it. They even got pop sockets and then they got some hair clips and they even got some shirts that say, Hi Barbie, Hi Ken. This one says, Hi Ken, and it's $28.95. And they also got some like pink pants or pink. This is a skirt here. Here's a shirt with all the different version of Ken's on there. So here, this is probably my favorite version of Ken from the movie. This is his cool outfit when he comes back from the real world and he finds out about the masculinity of men and he changes Barbie's house into the Mojo Dojo Casa house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a pretty cool outfit. This looks like the one used in the movie. He's got the chain, he's got the fur coat, fanny pack that says Ken on there. I wish they had this merchandise. This. This would sell rather would than the little get you this whole outfit. right? This is pretty cool. They also have some of Barbie's other accessories, like her brush that she used in the very beginning of the film, her phone, and then her binoculars. As you can see, nothing is functional. It's all like jumbo-sized Barbie toys. Even her toothbrush, when she pretended to put some toothpaste, started brushing her teeth. These are all the things used in the film. Even Ken's guitar back there. These are pretty interesting to see on film, and to see the actors use them was even funnier. And now they have them here at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour on display. Kind of to see that these are like jumbo sized toys unfortunately they don't sell these so I know that would be so cool yeah that'd be pretty cool and here we have Barbie's iconic slippers on display you can see the rhinestones in the back the little fur now these you had your eye on these are really nice these are my favorite prop that they have here besides the car I just want these slippers oh. You can see her last name on there. That is cool. I'm assuming like that chapter five, like the scene. That they they do doing. look used. You can I see right there. So yeah. these are screen accurate. I'm sure they are. These so. are amazing. And over here on this side, they have this really cool photo op that I've seen at a lot of movie theaters. It's actually a Barbie box that you can step in. I'm definitely and gonna go in there. Right you're gonna now. get in there? Let's see what it looks like. Nice. You're officially a Barbie. <laughs> That's awesome. And here are some of the two main head honchos here, Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny. We're gonna be seeing a lot of these two here today, along with Animaniacs and a bunch of other Looney Tunes. We're gonna take a tour through the back lot. We're gonna head inside in just a bit and start our tour. All right, so we've entered the introduction part of our tour where a lot of the history is shared in this room. You can see this is the Burbank lot. This is a photo of it. This was the actual, one of the first studios here in Hollywood. 
And then there's Harry Warner, one of the founders, or brothers I should say. There were four of them. There is an overview of the studio. And there's Jack Warner as well, one of the other brothers. One cool thing I like to look at is Jack Warner's phone book. You can see it says Walt Disney Studios. I'm sure they've had a lot of contact together, maybe shared ideas and maybe even borrowed a few things here and there. You know, two studios not too far from each other in the same city probably worked a lot together. But that's pretty cool that they actually have the actual phone book here. And then with a few other props as well that we'll probably see throughout the tour. And here we have a little replica of the Warner Brothers water tower, which we're gonna be seeing later on. It's a pretty iconic piece. You can see it even from Universal Studios Hollywood. Yeah, you can see it from the freeway in the streets also, but yeah. it's cool to have the replica. Yeah, that's here in the introduction room. And over here, they have some history on animation. So like Looney Tunes and Animaniacs and Scooby-Doo, all that good stuff is on this side. Here we are in the classic section where a lot of black and whites took place, Dirty Harry, Rebel Without a Cause, where James Dean actually spent a lot of time here in the back lot and did pretty much was babysat by one of the directors. Yeah, because he was always late to set. He was always late, he was always partying, and he just wanted to make sure yeah. that he was gonna be here. So hopefully we'll be passing by his old apartment area. And like I said, there's a lot of history here in the Wonder Woman Studio lot with classics, animation, and even movies filmed today. I'm not sure if we're gonna see more Barbie stuff. Hopefully. Um, but we also have another part of the tour that's self-guided, and that's a really cool interactive area. So we'll be passing by there when we're done, and we're gonna start our tour in just a bit. Let's get started. Let's get started. most historic studios in Hollywood. Wait a minute, wait a minute, you ain't heard nothing yet. More than a hundred years of extraordinary storytelling. They're looking at you, kid. Black and white. Oh, this better change in the middle like in The Wizard of Oz. Wow! This is a magical place. I think that might be the best moment of my life. Discover how your favorite movies, TV shows are made. Ah! Nothing short of wizardry. Expecto Patrona! Warner Brothers sits on a 110 acre lot. They went to the movies. Oh yeah, this is it. This is a true warping studio. Rolling, rolling. Let's do the math. There are 30 sound stages, a dozen exterior lots, more than 20 re recording stages, and six. ADR stages. Oh! Our shows are popular around the world. Yeah! Solo un pizzico. And are dubbed into over 46 languages. How you doing? Genki kai. It's Tenzo. They say Becky. Come with you, man. I'm doing good, baby. How you doing? <laughs> that undeniable, unforgettable emotion we have when we've shared a moment. You're a thief and a liar. I only lied about being a thief. This show is the greatest experience I have ever had. From talk shows, to feature films, to animated classics. <gasps> Superman and Harry Potter too. And we can't forget Looney Tunes, Teen Titans, Tom and Jerry, Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo-Doo-Doo. Warner Brothers is home to shows like All-American, Young Sheldon, and you. Not you. It's our show. You. Gossip Girl could be listening. Yeah, she's everywhere. We make all the entertainment you love. <laughs> Dramas with heart. <laughs> and comedies with heart. I mean, come on. Right? Nobody wants to clap. All right. Sueñito, it means little dream. What is the king's decision? 
This is Sparta! Time to be powerful. She with you? I thought she was with you. Batman, Wonder Woman, The Big Bang Theory, and Friends. All filmed here. This is the best date you'll ever go on. Betty, can we make a vow? No boy will ever come between us again. I can take care of myself. Can I be like you someday? You can be anything you want to be. Brace for impact. We all need justice. We all need mercy. You will remember me. Barbara, you believed in me? Dreams become reality, right here on the lot. Who is your favorite friend? I would say Ross. Ross? <laughs> I'm looking for someone to share in an adventure. Will you marry me? Yes, 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 she will marry you! <laughs> I'm not scared. Then get up there. You're under arrest. Drop your gun and keep your hands where I can see them. I don't have to show you any stinking bushes. Go ahead. Make my day. I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown. I amuse you. <laughs> Please welcome Joker. And here we go. This is Warner Brothers. Thank you for being a fan. It's time to join the adventure. Enjoy the ride. Yeah. Stuff that dreams are made of. I love magic. The great story of Warner Brothers is just as compelling as those of the films we've made, and it starts with four brothers. The Warners were Polish immigrants who moved to the United States in pursuit of the American dream. Starting as film exhibitioners on the East Coast, they left their home behind and headed west to begin making their own films. Once there, they took a big risk and invested in sound pictures. The Jazz Singer, released in 1927, was the first talking motion picture and innovated the entire film industry. Generations later, this studio remains home to a growing family of artists, technicians, and visionaries who share the Warner Brothers passion for entertaining us all. And behind these gates, the story continues. Alrighty, folks. Uh, we up through the early 2000s with Tom Hanks' movie Road to Perdition. Gangster movies were kind of what Warner Brothers was first known for producing. Since then, we kind of expanded onto many other genres beyond that. Now, we renamed this whole area Hennessy Street after Dale Hennessy, who's a production designer on the movie Annie. Now, it's a big contribution to this back lot. It's going to be adding all the fire escapes you guys see on the fronts of the buildings here. We went to New York City junkyard, can't pick them all out, we brought them all down here onto this back lot. Now you guys are going to see two main types of sets here today, practical sets and facades. Anytime we're talking about a practical set, we're talking about one of these sets in which you can film inside and outside of the buildings. The other type of set we're going to talk about is called a facade. That's just going to be the outsides of the building. You guys look especially right over there. You can see how we have these outsides here, but then when you look right in those windows, it's kind of small. There's not always a lot of spaces to film in there. Uh, we just actually build the insides of the sets on a sound stage. So as the characters walking right in there, then boom, we'll cut right to the sound stage and show two different locations there. Now here at Warner Brothers, we have what's called an open lot policy. This means that any studio can come here and film. Use any of our back lots, any of our sound stages. They can make any changes they want to make. We just ask that after they're done filming, that they return things to the way that they were when they found them, unless they do something that we like better. And we'll be like, hey, cool, we're going to keep that. That's why you guys may hear me refer to some different movies and TV shows that aren't Warner Brothers. They can actually film here as well. Now, all these storefronts that you guys see right in front of us to our right, but also right over on our left, are all part of Medford, Texas for the show Young Sheldon. Now we've got things like parking meters, stop lights, street lights, anything, stop signs, anything they want to add to the fronts of the buildings here. But right out here on the street, while we are the home of DC, we filmed some Marvel stuff here. Yes, I see your shirt right over there. It's an awesome shirt. Thanks. <laughs> we filmed two versions of Spider-Man here, actually, at the studio. First one's going to be for Tom Holland's Spider-Man Homecoming. On the very beginning of that movie, they're playing Blitz Creek Bob. It's montaging Spider-Man doing different things around New York City. Now, in one of those little montages, he's seen giving a woman directions. She rewards him with a churro. That was right outside here. Now, for the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie, when he first becomes Spider-Man, he sees an ad in the newspaper that, you know, he takes pictures of himself as Spider-Man, he can sell them to the Daily Bugle, who makes some money doing that. So when he first sets up the camera, starts fighting the first set of thugs in here, 
That's all right here in the center of the street. If you guys look very carefully at the buildings in the background, you'll recognize the architecture of the one right over there where they were filming that scene. Right now right outside here, there was a date scene for the movie Don John with Scarlett Johansson and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, seen right here on the sidewalk. Now behind us, if anybody's familiar with the show Abbott Elementary, they actually turned mm -hmm. this building into a nail salon for their series. Now for my Friends fans, Friends pretty much filmed the entirety of a show here in California for the most part, not actually New York City. Sorry if that ruins it for anybody. <laughs> now, Friends filmed a lot here on this street. One of the episodes that comes to mind involves the character Kathy, one of Joey's girlfriends. Chandler's got a big crush on her, so she's going for a jog all the way up the street right over here. Chandler's over here on this side. Now to really make it seem like New York City, they line the entire street bumper to bumper with different cars and taxis. We got a bunch of extras. We told them, walk around, look like you're going somewhere. That's exactly how they filmed that scene here. Now standing right over there, are, excuse me, sitting right over there on the steps with that gray building right down there. That's where Phoebe finds the thumb uh, in her coffee. <laughs> and at the very edge of the street right down there, that's where Marcel the monkey has his big movie break. So France pretty much filmed, like I said, all over this back lot right over here. Now another sitcom, Big Bang Theory. There's an episode where they're all dressed as the Justice League. They're walking up right over here. From the far end right down there, there's a car that's down there. Now the car that's down there is getting stolen. Since they're dressed as the Justice League, they want to act heroic like them. So what do they do? They all turn and go the other way. Top of that, we had another sitcom here. This building right over here was used as the Williamsburg Diner for a show called Two Broke Girls, starring Pat Denning. Right over here as well. Now, Hennessy Street has played both real and fictional cities. It was Gotham City for many of the Batman movies like Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. The street itself isn't all that long. So every time you see the Batmobile turning the corner, the crews out here changing the fronts of the facades and all the buildings here so that the audience doesn't recognize that Batman's pretty much driving up and down the same set of streets all over again. Especially one of the big scenes where in Batman returns, the Penguin takes control of the Batmobile, forcing Batman to drive pretty much up and down these same streets right over here. Take a look at those buildings in the background, watch them very carefully. You might recognize all of them over and over again. So if you guys want to take a knock on the building, feel free to do so. I don't want to rob you guys of that experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, it's definitely a plastic, plaster. Wow, it's definitely not brick. Now the great building that we see right next to it was used in a Jim Carrey movie called The Mask. This would have been his apartment building. Now there's a scene in that movie where his landlord is chasing him. So they crash out of the top window. He lands on the ground right here. He builds this himself up and says, look Ma, I'm roadkill. <laughs> or he gets the horn too. This is, this is, this is no way. Now this wow. same building can also be seen so in funny. one of us Steven Spielberg's movies called Minority Report with Tom Cruise. That a big jetpack chase sequence takes place on the street. And about Tom Cruise climbing to the front side of this building right over here. Now the trees that we have here. Do you guys believe they're real or do you think they're fake? You did? I think they're real. They're real. You think they're real? Yeah. Anybody else? You say fake too? Uh, they have dead leaves. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, that's why I say they're real. They're fake. They're real. <laughs> Good observation. You're right. They're yeah. all real trees. Oh, okay. Now they weren't originally here. They were actually put in for an Adam Sandler movie called You Don't Mess with the Zohan. Now in that movie, Adam Sandler's character works in a hair salon. It could be that green building you guys see right on the corner, right over there. Oh, if we want the audience to believe we're in Paris, what's something they have to be able to see? Eiffel Tower, right? Now, normally we have scaffolding on top of these buildings. We don't because they're doing some roof work. But what would happen is a couple different things. With the scaffolding up there, we can hang water grids, make it look like it's raining here. Think like a giant shower faucet head that just hangs right off the buildings here. We can hang a backdrop if we want to change the scenery, like showing the Eiffel Tower in the background. Or you can even add a green screen if they want to make any digital changes to the buildings here. You can do all that kind of stuff. Now, while this backlot was first known for its gangster movies, it became later known for its musicals as well. So we've already had Annie. All these fire escapes we see here can be seen in the movie Rent, where they're burning the eviction notices as well. The red building you guys see right back there was used in a movie called The Greatest Showman. In the beginning of that movie, you can see a young P.T. Barnum stare right into those windows there. They cut to their first musical number in the movie called A Million Dreams. Montages over several different locations. But anytime during that song that you guys see of City Street, that's all this street right over here. We film commercials here. Is anybody here familiar with the song Party Rock Anthem? 
music video filmed right here on this street. As well as uh, Lizzo's song Special. She's a music video that was here too. And Halsey's Nightmare as well. And if anybody's recently seen a Verizon commercial featuring Seth Meyers, that was right there. Does anybody have any questions about anything before we hop back on our cart? Because I'll also have a video to show you guys so you can kind of visually see uh, this back off kind of thing. Pretty cool how a lot of commercials are filmed here. So our videos and other production companies come to film here. Pretty neat. A lot of facades. A lot of buildings that look like New York. They could transform it to Paris. Fake bus stop. Now we recently changed the front of that logo to have a nice bright pink logo because you guys may have heard a movie called Barbie that just came out. Uh, I guess only like a handful of people in the world have seen it or something like that. <laughs> How much water do you guys think is in that water tower? None. What was that? Something None. Again? None? None. Genius. No water in the water tower. <laughs> that wasn't always this way. Back in the day when we didn't have any plumbing in the lot, that tower actually held about 100,000 gallons worth of water. Now it just kind of stands as an iconic part of our company's history. And if you guys are familiar with the Animaniacs, you know they need to live somewhere. Now before I give you guys a little video here on uh, Hennessy Street, we talked to you guys about this parking lot that you see right here. Now that doesn't sound super exciting on the surface. But this parking lot we call Lot H or Lot Helicopter actually named after Frank Sinatra. Back when he used to work with Warner Brothers, he would frequently commute here from Palm Springs. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that LA traffic is not very good, right? <laughs> So he just did what any of us would do. One day he just took his helicopter, landed it right here without any warning. So we just kind of called it Lot Helicopter Avenue. <laughs> typically we're gonna turn these big parking lots into what we call base camps. It's where we're gonna get a lot of production vehicles parking, whether it's actors and actresses, trailers, hair and makeup, craft services, all the people make food on set. They like to take over all these big parking lots that we have all around the studio here. Alrighty folks, we're gonna give you guys a little video here on uh, Hennessy Street. This is Hennessy Street, as it was seen in the 1982 motion picture version of the musical Annie. Hennessy Street has since been transformed into Gotham City for the Batman movies. And it was also the futuristic Rouge City in Steven Spielberg's AI artificial intelligence. Talented production designers created these locations by adding physical elements to these facades. But in The Last Samurai, when Billy Connolly and Tom Cruise round the corner and head off into the distance in 19th century San Francisco, they were really walking off of Hennessy Street and onto the modern studio. The San Francisco backdrop was all added digitally with computers during post-production. Alrighty guys, now we're actually gonna be heading to a pretty unique back lot that we have here at the studio. It's called our jungle. Now what makes the jungle unique is that it's actually the last jungle back lot in all of Hollywood. So lots of studios are gonna wanna come here to use it to film. Now it was actually originally built in the 1950s for a movie called Santiago starring Alan Ladd and it played the role of Cuba. Now our jungle actually has over 250 different species of plants inside of it that really kind of allow us to make it any location that we need it to be here. And most of those plants are actually non-native to California here. Now the two buildings you guys see in the front of the jungle here, they're both built for a TV series called Invasion. It was a spin-off of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Anybody here? couple people but it only lasted one season but we like these buildings so we kept them around now, on our left hand side this shed was used in two episodes of the big bang theory the first one where they all go paintballing you see shell and the gang all huddled up in there and then he runs out and goes geology isn't a real science <laughs> now, you can also see it featured when penny has her big commercial break for the hemorrhoid cream so we're watching that commercial it was all filmed right outside there and if you guys are horror movie fans you can see it appear in the movie annabelle creation it's a scene where little girls going back into a cabin she enters the cabin, there's a scarecrow that's hanging on the wall, and it slowly starts to come to life. Now this other shed, or excuse me, the same shed was actually used in the movie Aquaman during the post credit scene where you can see the Black Manta waking up in the doctor's lab. Mm. The other building right in front of us here, best known for playing Merlot's Bar and Grove from the HBO series called True Blood. You're going to see the same building appear in the show Lucifer. The building explodes, Lucifer walks out totally unharmed, as he does quite often in the series. Now this same building was actually used as seven different locations for Pretty Little Liars. They just gave it a different labeling on the front of the building so the audience doesn't recognize that they're using it, you know, that many times throughout the series. 
Now we actually have a little DC movie coming out called Blue Beetle. It just opened, I think, yes, yeah, it just opened yesterday. Uh, they actually did use our jungle a little bit to film there. Now, I'm going to keep this scene relatively vague. That way, you know, it doesn't ruin it for anybody in the time if they're going to see it. Now, towards the end of the movie, there is a giant uh, flashback sequence. You'll know it when you see it. Uh, they filmed all the flashback over in the jungle here. Hmm. On our right-hand side, you guys will see all of our bamboo. Now, all this bamboo was put in for a 1970s TV series called Kung Fu. They wanted the jungle to look like China. But bamboo is an invasive species, so we were unable to get rid of it. So it's going to join our over 250 species of plants. Episode of ER, where George Clooney's Dr. Ross rushes into a storm drain to save a little boy. Now the show is set in Chicago, it's pouring rain, you'd imagine it's supposed to be cold. There are actually coils underneath the lagoon that kept it heated. So don't feel too bad for George. He was nice and warm at 85 degrees. You can also see this lagoon featured in Gilmore Girls, where Jess is pushed into the pond. You can see it in Tim Burton's first movie, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. You can see, we can see Pee-wee swinging across this lagoon with his bicycle right beneath him. Oh, now, it's not wow. always filled with just water. We've also That's filled it with cool. dirt and played a graveyard for the Conjuring prequel called The Nothing. Now, the last building right in front of us was used in one of our best picture-winning movies from Clint Eastwood called Million Dollar Baby. It was used as Ira's roadside diner. It's also appeared as Spencer's dad's cabin in the show All-American. Alrighty guys, check out those uh, TV screens again. The building at the start of the jungle was Merlot's Bar, HBO's True Blood. And our lagoon became a not-so-private lake for Natalie Wood in The Great Race. It was featured in an Emmy Award-winning episode of ER, was 19th century Japan in The Last Samurai, and was home to Ira's Roadside Diner in the Academy Award-winning Million Dollar Baby. That same building was Spencer's dad's cabin in All American, and our jungle was also the forest outside Wayne Manor in Batman Forever. Now this little street here is called Warner Village. Now Warner Village uh, was established in 2004. So this whole area used to look completely different. It was set up like a giant western town. We called it Laramie Street. Would have been the home to our westerns for TV shows like Cheyenne, Sugarfoot, Maverick, even parts of the movie Blazing Saddles. In fact, the last known thing to have filmed in Laramie Street was actually a music video for Will Smith's song, Wild Wild West. But eventually the western as a genre began to fall out of popularity, so they decided to scrap that whole area and turn it into something new. Now, when they were figuring out what they wanted to turn it into, they were split between two decisions. Building a neighborhood for filming, and building more production office space. Now, it looks like we just built the neighborhood, but we actually did both. Every single one of these houses that you guys see here are all different production offices for different movies and TV shows. You can see right over there we got a sign for a show called Night Court. Uh, we've also had Ted Lasso use one of these houses for an office. Young Sheldon. We even have a movie coming out called The Nun 2 in September. Uh, they use one of these houses as an office as well. Now we'll also film out here on this street. We need an episode of Fuller House film out here. Your DJ gets proposed to. They have a big uh, flash mob dance sequence on this street. We've also used this neighborhood for the George Lopez show. In the episode with the neighborhood watch, you can see George and some of the other neighbors going around and knocking on the doors of the different houses here. Now this house here on our left, number 187. This house tends to get featured a little bit more often than some of the other houses here. Do you guys have any guesses as to why that is? What's a little bit different about this one? Has a longer lawn? Exactly. The house is set further back giving it much more of a lawn here. So they use it a little bit more often. It was uh, used as Hannah's house for Pretty Little Liars. It was also most recently used as Bob's house for the show Bob Hart's Abishola. Now because we have those offices on the insides there, they're never gonna be filming on the inside. So we'll do a very similar trick like we do with our facades. We film on the outside, second the actors go walking through the door, boom, they come to their sound stage. Now here at Warner Brothers, we like to use every bit of this lot for filming that we can. Even down to our corporate offices like you guys see right in front of us here. On the insides, all things like legal, marketing, communications. When we designed all the outsides to have this very generic look to them so we could use them as different locations for different movies and shows. One of the other things you may notice about the buildings is that there's no major labelings on them. It makes it uh, very easy for production to come in here and just start using this area to film. Now this building has played a hospital on three Love different this shows. It's very cool. ER. Bob Hart's Abishola and the show You. It was a police station for Nathan Fillion's series called The Rookie. Believe it or not, they even used it as a Mexican restaurant for the West Wing. 
They turned it into a bus station on Gilmore Girls. Most recently, it has appeared in the show Shrinking, starring Harrison Ford and Jason Segel. They turned it into some law offices for their show. But you guys may even recognize it from the movie Space Jam 2, A New Legacy. It's where LeBron James drops his son off for video game camp. Has a nice little conversation with Bugs Bunny, just right over there to our left. Across the street from each other. Those are fake bus stops. Film somebody getting picked up, and then boom, dropped off right across the street there. Used for filming. Cool. If you guys also look up here towards your right, similar type of idea with these buildings here. If you guys are familiar with Young Sheldon, this is all of East Tech University from their show. Because these buildings already kind of vaguely look like a college campus, they just went ahead and used this as their campus. You guys can even see their parking space is still left over. Now we're actually going to get the chance to walk around again this next area here. It's called Midwest or Anytown USA, built in the 1940s. It tended to look like many different towns all across the country. It was Stars Hollow for Gilmore Girls, Rosewood, Pennsylvania for Pretty Little Liars, River City, Iowa for The Music Man, Hazard County for the Dukes of Hazard TV series, parts of Chicago for Shameless, Alabama for Heart of Dixie, and a lot of other productions beyond that. I'll give you guys a little video here, and then we'll walk around a bit. Midwest Street was turned into River City, Iowa for the film version of the Broadway musical The Music Man. The town square also stood in as Salinas, California for East of Eden. And those are the same storefront facades that were used as the backdrop for this scene from Clint Eastwood's Jersey Boys. In this motion picture, Frankie Valley kept lookout for his friends in front of this small market. And that small market was used as Lucky Leon's cupcake shop on the TV series Pretty Little Liars. You'll see Midwest Street on a lot of television shows. In fact, it was turned into all of Stars Hollow for the hit series Gilmore Girls. Now it doesn't snow much here in Southern California, unless the art department brings it in by the truckload. Now one of the tricks with a backlot like this, like you're hearing at the end of the video, we want to make it look like we have different seasons here, right? Because in California we're actually quite limited as to what we can get here. So what happens is we have what's called our greens department. They're a little section of our arts department. It's their job to kind of handle the different season changes here. So if we want it to look like winter time here, our greens department will go along and they will pluck the leaves off of all the trees that we see in the camera. Wow. And then if they That's need to show amazing. that changing of season, those leaves have not grown back yet. They actually zip tie new leaves back onto the trees. That's how they show that changing of season. Wow. <laughs> now a long time ago for things like snow, they used to use asbestos. You won't see them doing that anymore. <laughs> Nowadays, you're mainly going to be seeing them use sheets of cotton. Have you guys ever see a scene where a character is catching snow on their tongue? What they're actually catching is potato flake. That way they can just kind of digest it just like that. Alrighty, folks, feel free to leave. Street is called King's Row. Named after the movie King's Row starring Ronald Reagan. All these houses here are different types of practical sets. You guys may have seen them here before. We'll start over here with this white house that you guys see. This is used as Mrs. Eagle's house for a movie called Gremlins. Now, she's not a very nice woman in that movie. The gremlins don't like her. They rig her stair lifts. Oh, I was using gremlins. Right there, very cool. Right over here. Well, I guess I'd also recognize that house from the show Growing Pains. That's the Seaver home as well. Oh, wow. Now I'll bring you guys uh, through this house right over here. A couple things about this house. This was used as the Geller house on Friends for the one with the prom video. So all the prom video footage is going to be right inside of here. We also use this as uh, Kim's Antiques from Gilmore Girls, even Emily's house from Pretty Little Liars. And actually, for Pretty Little Liars, there's a scene where they said the car crashing through those windows there. They actually did do this. But we removed the entire glass frame, put what we call a sugar glass in there in place. You guys can imagine, that's a scene we can only really do one time. So they set up 10 different cameras. Some on the inside of the house, some on the outside. Capture every single angle of that car crash they could possibly want. So once it's done, they got to rebuild the whole side of the house all over again. So if you have any questions about that at all? All right, then I'll bring you guys into the house here. Cool. All right, going into one of the facades. Pretty cool. Let's see. Got fake ceiling up there. Inside of our practical sets here, you guys look up, you're gonna see we don't have our second floor here. So we can hang all of our lights and microphones up here to kind of cover the full set, but stay out of the field of view of the camera. Those tubes right there, that's all of our AC coming in right over there. They'll always be running in between takes. There's usually a lot of downtime. 
guys match all the crew, all the lights, whether you're in California, it gets very warm here. So they're constantly cooling these sets down. This means that our sets can really only be one floor tall. So if you guys do think back to that episode of Friends, you got Ross sitting on the staircase there. He finds out he can take Rich in the front. He goes running up the stairs there, turns the corner, acts like he's going to a bedroom. You guys actually look right under there. There's just a little walkway. And you guys see when passing the kitchen, there's just a little walkway that he just walks out on, clears that camera view. If they ever want to show him upstairs, goes a little bit of the stage. Now as you guys kind of walked in here, and if you take like a little bit of a walk around, See how you're not making, you're just kind of naturally walking across the floor, not a ton of noise. Yeah, no it's not a real wooden floor, this is a sheet of vinyl that they lay on the ground. Oh. The biggest reason wow, they do that is they want to keep uh, your footsteps down as much as possible because those microphones are very sensitive. It's very cool. Things like footsteps can disrupt the dialogue they're trying to get from the actors the day of filming. In fact, usually when you guys hear footsteps in a scene, doesn't really belong to the actors. It belongs to people in post-production called Foley artists. They add all the sound effects into the different movies and shows. They do other noises too, like if a character gets in a fight, somebody breaks a bone, they just take a piece of celery, they snap it, record that noise, that's your bone snapping <laughs> sound effect. Now all of our practical sets are gonna look very blank, generic looking on the inside, because people call production designers, set dressers, figure out, you know, what walls we want to have, what furniture we want to hang here, what matches our time period, the style of the characters, all those things are taken into consideration. They add them all here into the sets. We pretty much just give them a blank canvas to work with, basically. So that they paint and clean and mm -hmm. yep. windows and whatever and... Yep. Oh. And then redo yep, it again? Do all that. What's that? And then redo it again yep. for another scene? <laughs> if they want to change the colors, yeah. Yep. Alrighty guys, any other questions about the house at all? This is also one of our double-sided houses here. So on this side, we actually have Rory and Lorelai's house from the show Gilmore Girls here. Hmm. Also in the backyard, we have a Spencer's shed from the show Pretty Little Liars as well. That was actually pretty cool, especially for uh, Gilmore Girl fans. It's on the flip side of this house is actually Suki's house from the show. They're meant to be good friends on the series. I guess I realize how good of friends they share the same house. This is a double sided facade. As you can see, this is one house or the front of one house, and then the other side is the front of one house as well. And then you have the barn back here, which is pretty cool. Pretty neat. Here we have Cousin Eddie's house from National Lampoons. I thought it was a real location, but apparently it's here on the Warner Brothers lot. And then you also have James Dean house in East of Eden. A lot of James Dean history here at the Warner Brothers studio lot. Mainly it's called French Street because the last standing set from the movie Casablanca is right here on this street. This is uh, used in the flashback where Rick and Nelson are seen having their lunch uh, just right over here outside this building. This area is also known as Pasadena for the Big Bang Theory. This is where Leonard and Sheldon's apartment would have been located on the series. The second building in right over here. And also right across the street here, this blue building was built for a movie called Small Soldiers. It played a toy store. No you can way. You see it in the movie wow. La La Land. The cafe where Emma Stone works in the movie. That's they the call it small Cafe Sur La Lot, which just meant Cafe on the Lot. And for my Crazy. fans of the show You, this is Love's Bakery, a fresh tart from the third season. Insane. That is cool. Small right over here on our right, store. the blue building facing us is Toy Store Diner from Gilmore Girls. We also have over to our left the Friends intro that was done There's on our the ranch about fountain. a mile up the road. Very popular, everybody they loves that. The entire fountain down here. If anybody's seen the Friends reunion, that was filmed right over here as well. We are in Shameless. They were both filmed out here. Hmm. Now, over to our left, this is Patsy's Pies from Shameless, where we see Fiona working on the show. Oh. It was also used as the Bluebell Diner for the show Young Sheldon. And we also have right across the street, we have Fiona's laundromat. Right over here. And you guys are going to see a large set of brown doors. This is ER's uh, ambulance bay here. Now this over here is our oldest back lot here at the studio. This is New York Street, built in the 1920s. In fact, this back lot was here before Warner Brothers was even here. We purchased this lot in 1928 from First National Pictures. We have this one back lot here and about three sound stages at that point in time. Now we have over 30 sound stages here. And for Hero Street, it is Washington, D.C. for the Linda Carter Wonder Woman series. One of the Gotham oldest the back lots in Hollywood. TV series. National City for the first season of Supergirl. And Metropolis for the show Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. We even had a little scene from the movie Ant-Man and the Wasp film here. We see Paul Rudd running down the street right over here in his underwear. 
Now you guys are going to see two theater facades on this street. This brown one was used for the Big Bang Theory when Sheldon steals a 21 second longer version of Raiders of the Lost Ark. And he starts running all the way up the street with the Raider Run. The very next theater over here was used in the Judy Garland version of A Star is Born. You can also see it on Friends where Joey has his big movie premiere. He invites Chandler with him. Chandler falls asleep in the middle of his movie. Now we also had a very big scene from The Mask here. This is where you can see Jim Carrey doing the Cuban Pete dance. At the end of the movie, that's all oh, right here. Oh wow, that's right. This is where he dances in front of the cops. That's so cool. And if you guys look right at the edge of the street there, you will see our courthouse building. This is where the mask building, Jim Carrey comes out. One of our best picture winning movies called Argo. Dances in front of the uh, NYPD, see, I believe. See Ben Affleck and Alan Arkin having some tacos for snaps. Now you can also see it used as Commissioner <laughs> Gordon's office for the original Batman TV series starring Adam West. Now every episode, the Batmobile would pull up in front of it and Batman and Robin would go running up those steps. Now the thing is, they filmed that scene one time and used it in every episode of the show. You can see a woman in a red dress passing by every single time. <laughs> now it was also considered a stunt at that time to go over six steps, so they actually had to get stunt doubles to play Batman and Robin. Oh, wow. Now a couple things before I give you guys a little video here. The building right over here for Friends fans is where Ross goes to break up with his girlfriend and she drops a water balloon on the top of his head. His uh, college student girlfriend. Then when you guys are at the fountain, another thing I want to point out for you guys, this area was used as Central Park for friends. So where Phoebe's doing her little run, that's right there. No. So if anybody feels brave enough to imitate that later. There's the courthouse the from Batman and Robin. <laughs> well, I will point out that the couch that's out there is made of fiberglass, it's not a real couch. Just be careful when you guys go to sit on it. It does catch a lot of people by surprise. And also too, you guys will see a tree with a rock right over there. That's Rory's study tree from Gilmore Girls. New York Street was also the starting line for the great race from New York to Paris. The same street was turned into a futuristic Los Angeles for Ridley Scott's Blade Runner. And this is the spot where Sheldon stole a copy of Raiders of the Lost Ark and was chased by an angry Will Wheaton and friends in the hit sitcom The Big Bang Theory. Why is there never a pontoon plane when you need one? Director Ben Affleck filmed scenes all over the lot for the Academy Award winning motion picture Argo, including this one on the courthouse steps. And there it is. It was labeled this way. She took a piece of paper, wrote the full house stage, and taped it over the front of the line. <laughs> there are all the sound Another big show that cool. had a uh, plaque here is actually Two and a Half Men. Hmm. That's going to be stage 26 right over here on our left. Both Two and a Half Men and The Big Bang Theory were tied for being our longest running uh, sitcom at 12 seasons. Love these sound stages, how they look, they look so old. Usually they're just given for kind of big impact reasons, so I mean, the exception is pretty much Friends, they have one for just being Friends. But uh, Two and a Half Men, Big Bang Theory, longest sitcoms. ER, longest drama at 15 seasons. And then the other one would be uh, Ellen. In the beginning where they're showing like the evolution of the different So Barbie parties, was filmed in filmed stage that, uh, 23 and also over the there. Big, uh, I am Just ahead of uh, 22. That, they got. that was also uh, 23 as well. Now each stage is gonna have a little uh, red light on the outside here. They're all called big wags. Now anytime those lights are flashing, that's an indication that they're filming inside of the stage. So kind of anybody that's passing by, we want to make sure that they're staying quiet. However, back in the day when James Dean would film on the Warner Brothers lot, he and Jack Warner would oftentimes butt heads. Right here. Every time he saw those lights flashing, he'd bring his motorcycle up to the front of the sound That's stage where the Barbie was on stage 23. Jack to the point where he banned motorcycles cool. on the lot. So then James Dean figured you can't ban a car. So then he just brought his car up and would honk outside of the sound stage. He was a real life uh, rebel without a car. Go enjoy the rest of your time here today at Warner Brothers. Just watch your hand step. Make sure you. All right, guys we're headed to the second here. part enjoy of our of tour. Today, the self portion. Let's go, friends. Let's go. Time. Very fun part. All right, we made it to Central Perk where they do sell some snacks and drinks. This is, like I said, the middle portion of the tour, and then after, followed by the self-guided portion. This is one of my favorite parts of the tour, just because they have drinks and snacks named after each character. And they're actually pretty good, too. They are pretty good. So we're going to get a little snack, little drink, and then head over to the self-guided portion of the tour. So here's a look at the themed drinks. They have the Joey, which is a mango cold brew, the Monica, which is a midnight mocha cold brew, the Rachel, which is a matcha 
or matcha latte. I forget how to say that. And they have the Ross, which is a classic flat white. And then they have the Chandler, the caramel hazelnut latte. And then the Phoebe, which is a cookies and cream ice blend. These are all themed with friends. I've tried two of them so far. They've all been pretty good. But I want to say the most popular one is the Joey, which is a mango cold brew tea, which I think is what Vanessa is going to get. All right, so you got your beverage. You got the Joey, right? I got the Joey. That's what I figured. That's what you got last time. Just because I got a coffee already, so I just wanted like a little refresher. Yeah, we got Starbucks before getting yes. in here, so. I just needed like an iced tea, so this is a mango iced tea. It's actually really good. It I is. got that last time. Yeah. Really refreshing. I love it. And so we started the self-guided part of the tour. Let me show you guys what this little screen does. Drag a photo here, and it'll give you a little clip of where the actor played. Leonardo DiCaprio, I think this is his first role, or one of his first roles, The Growing Pains, 1985. And you got Daniel Radcliffe, of course, and Harry Potter. Look at how young he was. So here we are in the second part of the room where you can see Toon Squad. This is Michael, I think Michael Jordan's outfit in Space Jam, 1996. There's a lot of outfits in here. You can see you got Selena over there. Here we got Batman's cow from 1992, Michael Keaton. That's pretty neat. My favorite Batman. There's gonna be a lot more to see at Batman later on. They have a lot of the wardrobes from Crazy Rich Asians in 2018, and then they also have Selena. These are some of the outfits. I don't believe these are her actual outfits. These are just the ones used in the film, but these are exactly identical replicas of the outfits that she actually used and performed in. These are actually worn by Jennifer Lopez. Yes, these are the ones from the film, but they are replicated from ones that she actually performed yes. in. I think her actual outfits are out in um, Texas, where she's from. They oh, have a okay. whole museum dedicated oh, to her. Oh, that's cool. Well, if you want to see the ones in the film, they're here inside the tour. Here we have this costume from the Elvis film that came out last year. I didn't get to see it, but I heard nothing but good things. This is a pretty accurate of something what Elvis would have worn. It was uh, used in the film in 2022. Take a look at all those details. Definitely, definitely an Elvis vibe on this. Here we are on one of the friends' photo ops. You can see everything in the back. You got the couch there to take a photo. And then they also have a photographer there to take your photo. So you'll get it at the end of the tour if you buy the photo package or you can just get a cell phone pic. <laughs> so there's our picture we got here at the friends' photo op. They were nice enough to take our phone. Um, they also did take a picture of us and gave us a card. I think we're going to be able to get that at the end of the tour. Um, and we'll have the option to buy it. But yeah, pretty cool photo here at the friends' photo op. So here we have some old crime gangster wardrobe used in the 40s and the 50s. Here this one says it was used in the Roaring 20s movie in 1939. And then this one was used in 1942. But this is some definitely some original gangster wardrobe from back in the day. Some wool suits. You got the hats as well. And then they also have some women dresses like kind of like Victorian 40s, 30s wear. These were also used in films as well. These are just a few of many they have on the tour. They actually have like a whole room full of wardrobe. So if you want to time period correct like outfit like this they have a whole area for that i can only imagine walking into that room and just seeing all the different outfits from yeah. the timeline like different timelines yeah like they take care of these they have them covered up so yeah. they're like in pristine condition they also have like stuff like this as well if you want to go even further back so here's a look at the staircase illusion you can see the backdrop there it doesn't lead to anywhere it's just actually a wall and then this would be penny's uh apartment here and then right across the way is going to be sheldon and leonard's apartment but this is just a studio you can see the floor it looks like a hallway to a an apartment complex you got the elevator there but in fact this is just part of a little studio you can see there's no no apartment there to go inside so pretty neat to see that this is how it's all put together and on film you can see just looks like a little hallway to an apartment area so here's a really cool thing called forced perspective it looks like they're sitting really close to each other but in fact he is sitting a little bit further and she's sitting a little bit closer to the screen and it makes her look like a giant this is what they use in lord of the rings and a lot of other movies um, to make the other person look like somewhat of a dwarf and the other person a giant when you can see here they're just kind of separated a little bit. Pretty neat little illusion they have here. So as long as she sits on one side and the other sits on the other, one will look like a giant and the other will look smaller. Such a cool little illusion and a cool photo op. All right, so now we're at the second part of the self-guided tour. We're gonna be heading down to the other portion where there's a lot of Wizarding World and a lot of DC. It's gonna be a really cool area. There's a lot to see. Let's head over there and uh, check out the rest of it. TG is up close to the water tower.
There's the water tower for, oh cool. And it's pink, I'm assuming for Barbie. Yes, they just covered <laughs> it for Barbie. Um, we don't know how long it's gonna stay like that, but we've definitely been enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Very neat. There's the water tower. Pretty cool. It's 133 feet tall. It used to hold over 200,000 gallons of water um, when Burbank was initially just farming land. Okay. Um, but there was an earthquake in 1933, sorry. Um, and they thought the water tower was gonna fall over onto the fire department. Um, oh, wow. Where it used to be on the front lot. That is not the right way to go. <laughs> um, and so they ended up moving it to where it is now. But oh, it hasn't had water in wow. it for, since about the 70s. Oh, wow. So it hasn't had water for a while, wow. Yeah. Okay. Just a whole lot of air for the Animaniacs, a little bit of furniture, all that. All right, here we are going to Action and Magic. That's what this is called. This is where all the costumes are for Harry Potter, Aquaman, DC films. So much is set in here and so much to see. Like I said, this tour is very, very long. You definitely have to take your time and see it for yourself. You can see you got Riddler, some other costumes from the Batman films. You got the Joker from The Dark Knight. And then from my childhood, Mr. Freeze, which is one of my favorites, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So if you guys seen the latest Batman movie, this is the Batmobile that debuted in the movie with the Robert Pattinson Batman. It's got some gauges in there that kind of look like something from Back to the Future. But the motor's in the back. This thing is a monster. Look at the size of this thing. It's literally like a boat. Check that out. My gosh. One of the coolest scenes in the movie by far. But they have it here in the middle of the room with all the other costumes. Here they also have the costume worn by Robert Pattinson. It's very distinctive with a nose piece there. It kind of looks like a early Batman costume with pieces put together from like shoulder pads. You got like little metal pieces as the bat. Pretty cool to see it up close and right next to the Batmobile. Here they also have the Justice League, which I haven't seen, but I recognize obviously Batman, Superman, Flash. This one is called Cyborg. Haven't seen him either. Uh, they have Wonder Woman and then Aquaman. You guys know who that is. Uh, played by Jason Momoa, but these are all the real costumes. They don't want you touching them These are all just on display pretty cool that they're not enclosed in a glass case You can actually see the details a lot of these are 3d printed, but very very cool and very unique Distinctly to the movie so you can see this Batman is very different. He's got like sunglasses on um, I haven't seen this. It's, I don't know. Is this Ben Affleck? Batman? Yeah, it says Ben Affleck So this is the Ben Affleck Batman and then on the other side they have the Robert Pattinson Batman, and they even have the Dark Knight one on the other These side too. These costumes look like they're not movable. Like, would you, like, if you were to go inside yeah. the costumes, I'm like, pretty sure they're definitely not comfortable. But behind the movie, yeah. it looks Especially pretty. Especially like Aquaman. Yeah. You don't feel like any material that's like stretchy and movable. Like, we can't touch it, obviously, so I wouldn't know. But yeah, you can't touch them, but crazy. Like, this totally was actually his looks like a different material. So here we've entered the Bat Cave, where now you can see the Dark Knight motorcycle. I think this is called the Bat Pod. Yeah, Bat Pod from 2008. And then they also have the other vehicles. My childhood Michael Keane Batmobile, which is my personal favorite. I think this debuted on the new uh, Flash movie, I believe it's called. But pretty cool to see it here. This is one of my favorite Batmobiles. Childhood iconic Batmobile for me. And over here, it looks like they have the Dark Knight weapons case. So pretty much all his weapons, his entire outfit. This Dark Knight Batman was, or this Batman in Dark Knight was pretty awesome. I loved him. It was uh, Christian Bale, and he did an amazing job. Dark Knight with the Joker, pretty he, iconic. He was my favorite Batman. I know you love Michael Keaton. Yeah. Christian Bale was pretty, pretty spot on Batman. And then he also got his like computer where he did all his monitoring on the Batman, all his research. Pretty cool to see this. You can't touch any of this stuff. This is all on display. And then I haven't seen this. This looks like they added this. Some more weapons and like, looks like little gas bottles and little Gadgets. Little gadgets from the Batman. Over here in the back is a giant screen with a glass in front of it and you can see there goes Batman. He's got more Batmobiles, one of the originals right there in the back. This is a pretty interactive screen. If you just hang out here, you'll see either Batman take off or come back. And there it is, the Michael Keaton Batman, my favorite Batman of all time. He did make a debut in the new Flash movie, which I haven't seen. I heard it wasn't very big debut, it was a small moment. 
but very cool to see his outfit still here. I love seeing his costume. He was my childhood Batman. Just so cool. The simplicity of this Batman versus the Robert Pattinson or the Dark Knight, it's just a lot sleeker, a lot smoother. Totally what a Batman out of a comic book should look like. Here we are heading into the Harry Potter section where the Weasley's flying Ford Anglia is hanging above us. All right, so now we're heading into the cupboard under the stairs, which was Harry Potter's room in the very first couple of movies, actually. So just imagine Harry Potter having a little room here underneath the stairs. Pretty, pretty crazy. You can see they even have his little action figures here that he would play with. And then his shirt that he wears, it's an oversized t-shirt, but we got a little beanie baby there too. This is where Harry Potter slept? And the Beanie Babies, I used to have that exact same one. That's so funny. Here they also have Harry's invitation to Hogwarts and his spectacles that are very distinctive. You know, if you see these glasses, they belong to Harry Potter. But there's the envelope. Here's a really cool photo op you can take right in front of the fireplace with all the envelopes. This is the part where all the envelopes are flying all over the room because Harry's uncle was throwing them away and the owls just kept coming and kept coming. But pretty cool photo op. You can stand over here on this side and stand in between all the envelopes and pretty much put your hand on the X like you're grabbing one and get a really cool photo here in front of the fireplace. So here, one of the final parts of the tour is the sorting hat experience. Now, the past two times, it's been correct for me. It so. was wrong last time for me. But the first time, it was it was actually right. No, so. this is actually my second time doing oh, it. Oh, your second time, yeah, okay. so the first time that I did it, they told me I was a Gryffindor, and I'm actually Hufflepuff. Yes, because there is an online test you can take, and that's more accurate. This is the sorting hat, the official sorting hat. So we're gonna see, see what they say today. Today. <laughs> All right, so let's see what house she is. The sorting hat is going to choose. Gryffindor! Ah. <laughs> oh, shit. There you go. Ah, shrewd and sharp. Slithering! Uh, always ready. <laughs> So we made it now to the shop. This is the end of the tour. This is the last part to get your goodies. Uh, I'm gonna look at some t-shirts. They have a lot of Warner Brothers merchandise, a lot of uh, themed movie merchandise, some movies that are filmed here. But I do wanna stick with Warner Brothers merchandise, so. And then you wanna get some Barbie stuff. Definitely gonna go check out the Barbie That's after. outside, yes. so I'm gonna get some shirts here. The last time I was here, I had my eye on this WB Crew shirt. Not sure if it has anything on the back. Oh, it does. It just says Crew. It doesn't have the Warner Brothers logo, but. Kind of reminds me of like a film crew shirt, something that would be on the scenes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then it's got the Warner Brothers logo in the front. Pretty cool shirt to wear on my next tour, since I will be, be coming here more often. Crew. Definitely gonna be wearing this on my next tour, so I'll probably get this one. I do like this one too, one of the old Warner Brothers logos, but they have it in this weird like ash red color. If they had it in black, I would definitely get it, but it's only available in that color. This one also caught my eye with the water tower. It's got the little art deco on there, the little studio in the back. It says film classics. This one, they did have my size. I'll probably get this one too. Doesn't have anything on the back, but still pretty cool picture in the front. I don't typically wear tan shirts. I usually wear black or white, um, mostly black, but this one's pretty cool. I like the picture, so I'll probably get this one. So I haven't seen too much tram merchandise, and this one actually has it on the shirt, but it has flash on there. I'm not a fan no. of flash. If, if it, it was, was like maybe Batman. If it was Batman, not even that. If it was just the tram alone with the water tower in the background, I would have got this one. But the Flash killed it for me. I'm not a fan of Flash. Probably one of the worst movies. Water tower on this. But I got the water tower. So the water tower is good enough for me. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's going to be all for today here from the Wonder Brothers Studio Tour, an amazing tour, awesome additions. It was just so much fun going through all of the different stage the sounds. Facades the facades and everything that was going on. A lot of filming and still going on. just seeing the Barbie stuff made yeah. my whole entire tour. I'm that's glad you got to see for, that. Yeah. And then the water tower, you can't see it yes, from here, I but know. we got a close image of it, of the water tower transformed into pink. It's they just said, so awesome. Yeah, they said they weren't sure how long it was going to be like that, but very cool that they did do it for Barbie. Barbie took over. Hollywood for she a little while. definitely did. And she still is here at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. So like always, thanks to every single one of you for watching, liking, and commenting on our videos. It does mean so much. Uh, we're happy to be back at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. We will be back real soon. It is my favorite tour in Hollywood. I know you love it. Yeah, so we'll definitely be back. We'd like to give you guys some updates. So if you guys do love the Warner Brothers Studio Tour and you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. But once again, guys, thanks for tuning in and helping us find the wonders of magic. Bye. Bye.